What's up guys, welcome back. As you can see, today's video is going to be a training log, and in fact, this is the first episode of the series, at least the first official one. The previous episode was more of a pilot episode because I didn't know what format exactly to use, but luckily I found that that format worked wonderfully if you adjust a couple of things. So I decided, hey, why not? Let's just start the series with the best workout possible, and that is an arm workout with rings and bands. I think that rings and bands are very underrated when it comes to building big arms, because people use rings for mainly compounds, ring push-ups, ring pull-ups, ring vert rows, and they use bands as a warm-up. And although they can be used for that, they can also be used to build some big fucking arms. So follow this workout if you want to find out how. As you can see, we are starting off with the first superset, which is composed of one arm band pushdowns, three sets of seven to five, fat grip pull ups, three sets of as many reps as possible, and ring face pulls, three sets of as many reps as possible as well. Although I like to aim to 10 to 20. This first superset is more of a warm up for the joints, but at the same time, we are accumulating high effort reps that be effective reps. The one arm band pushdowns, because of the extra range of motion and capabilities of doing shoulder extension, are great to warm up the long head and also the elbow joint due to the resistance curve, allowing us to take a movement to failure very safely while protecting our joints, while at the same time preparing them for the next block, which is going to consist of mainly weighted stretch movements. Then, when it comes to the fat grip pull ups, this movement is what I would say is the warm up movement for both the forearms and the biceps, while also accumulating some extra back volume. I have to say that fat grip pull ups are the most humbling thing I have done in a while because even though I can do a shit ton of pull ups by myself, just adding on some fat grips reduces my reps from 22 to 5. I am not joking. Every time I do them, my forearms get absolutely wrecked and also does my brachialis. And also, fat grip pull ups allow me to basically meet the requirement of targeting my back with high frequency while still being overall arm focused. On my upper days, I'm going to be doing both vertical and horizontal pulls with high intensity, so my back is pretty fried for the next session, which is an arm day. So, this uh, fat grip pull ups basically allow me to get that little bit extra of gains that I would otherwise miss out on. Lastly, we have the ring face pulls, which in my opinion are one of the most underrated movements of all time. It is very frustrating when I go to the gym to hit my rear delts because I'm constantly comparing it to ring face pulls and it just doesn't compare at all. You get a massive stretch on the traps, rear delts and side delts and also bulletproof your joints so the next time you do your pressing you won't feel any type of shoulder pain. I recommend you experiment with close grip ring face pulls and wide grip ring face pulls. You can do it in multiple ways. Um, the way Fitness FAQs likes to do it is basically externally rotating when doing the movement. Meanwhile, I myself usually prefer to just row to my eye level approximately or even higher. And sometimes I think of doing basically a band pull apart but with the rings and uh, basically trying to drive my hands towards my forehead and uh, pass beyond it, if that makes sense. But yeah, this movement is goaded and basically has no competition, like the cable version is just shit compared to this one. And with dumbbells, the best thing you might get is a power raise. I actually trained with a friend of mine in the gym and I brought my rings and I made him try ring face pulls and uh, he told me like, holy shit, these are good, man. Like they got my rear delts absolutely destroyed. And he usually does his Y races on cable stations and we did Y races in uh, on the rings basically. And again, he loved them way more than the cable version. In conclusion, if you want some big ass delts, then definitely get rings. My delts didn't grow from lateral races or from doing weird shit on cables. It was just vertical pressing and face pulls basically every single day, plus, of course, pull ups and inverted rows. And I have to say, I have some very juicy delts.
Now we're going to start with the second block, which is going to be two weighted stretch movements, one for the biceps and the other one for the triceps. And I would say that these two movements are hella underrated in the bodybuilding world, because I have to say that these two give me the best stimulus for the target muscle. For the ring extensions, even though I prefer to do my extensions on cables because of my elbow issues, like I have very sensitive elbows, but if that wasn't a concern, I would actually spam the shit out of ring extensions because they gave me a stimulus like no other. With cables, I had to do close to 10 sets a session to even feel something, but with ring extensions, just 4 sets are more than enough. Also, they are the only movement for the triceps that actually leaves me with doms and tightness in the muscle compared to cable extensions or cable pushdowns. And although soreness and tightness is not an indicator for growth, it is a step in the right direction. It is a sign that you cause disruption and therefore, for me, it is an indicator of adaptations. So for me, having DOMS is actually a sign that I'm doing things right. But going back to the topic, ring extensions are actually brutal. I used to do them with straight feet, like in a push-up position. Thing is, you recruit way more abs that way and I want to hit my triceps, man. I don't give a shit about abs, at least with this movement. So what I do instead is put myself in a ring height push-up position so I can take away the abs for the movement and really focus on stretching the shit out of the long head. Also, once I fail, I like to do multiple mechanical drop sets to really be a masochistic asshole and completely wreck my triceps. So for the normal set, I elevate my feet and I try to go down as slowly as possible and then push up however I can to get into another eccentric. I usually get approximately 6 to 8 reps and then I do a mechanical drop set with my feet on the floor and I try to put basically my hands in front of me and basically extend or do the eccentric of an extension with an arc. That way I have that shoulder flexion part and really stretches the long head. Then when I push back I try to do some shoulder extension to keep targeting the long head. Once I failed at the regular feet on the floor variation, I use an assisting feet to do assisted concentrics and then when I do the eccentrics, I help with that feet to lean forward even more to stretch further the long head. And what I say might sound painful and that is because it is. It is actually really painful and it gives me a massive pump on every single set so I usually have to take 2-4 to four minutes to let it like de-pump before I can go back at it. Otherwise, I can't really do the movement and I even feel some type of like weakness when trying to perform a repetition. So if this doesn't speak to the power of ring extensions, I don't know what will. Really try them out and you'll see some crazy ass tricep gains. Then when we talk about the pelican curls, it is a similar case. It is very trendy right now to say that the way to search for the biceps isn't really a thing or it won't give you any extra benefit. I like to go against this notion due to the fact that the moment I started incorporating pelican curls, my biceps basically blew up even though I was doing a shit ton of ring curls and band curls previously. Also, I can attest that 4 sets of ring curls or 4 sets of even heavy curls in the 4 to 8 rep range don't feel the same way as 4 sets of pelican curls. That is due to the fact that the other ones are mid-length focus or contraction focus, meanwhile this one is actually very very weighted stretch focus. So in my opinion, I think there is a benefit in incorporating weighted stretch curls and this one is the GOAT. I really don't get the same feeling from free weights like incline curls or even cables like Bayesian curls and I really can't explain why. It is just a feeling of getting your biceps absolutely tore apart on every single rep. I'm gonna recommend that you include this movement, but that you slowly build up to it because it can be very, very tough on the tendons and you can even tear a bicep. So make sure to slowly build up to the movement. I actually started with reps of 30 and right now I can handle reps of 8 or even 6. Then on every single session warm up either with pull-ups or with ring curls or with band curls, just a concentric focus movement that is actually going to drive some blood into the area to prevent any type of tendonitis, or at least to alleviate it. Make sure to really control the eccentric as you go down and to flex the triceps at the bottom so you get the maximum stretch. Don't cheat on the range of motion, this movement benefits from the high range of motion that it has. The cheating can be done on the concentric. What I do right now is I go to failure on one set, 
then I extend the set by constantly going forward, taking a couple of steps. And once I cannot do any more reps, I use my feet to assist on the concentric, and that way I can get some extra eccentrics. The same way as with the ring extensions, this completely fries my triceps and it leaves me with a massive pump. I'd say that for both of these movements, the 6 to 15 rep range actually fits the best and also I would recommend including some type of advanced intensity techniques. You don't have to be a complete masochist like I am doing mechanical drop sets, rest pause and on top of that assist concentrics, but just adding one of these will actually help you a ton. What you can try, if you want to with pelican curls, is do your pelican curls and then once you fail, you switch up to ring curls to get a couple extra reps. But you can also just do plain sets to failure. It's just that I like to play around with the intensity and uh, torture myself as much as possible. Here we have the last set and as you can see I'm just starting off with my feet on the floor instead of starting with the chair and continually doing mechanical drop sets on the ring extensions. And with the ring pelicans I actually maintained overall my feet positioning, I was actually in the same position as in the beginning, it's just that I can get way less reps and the rep quality is in prestige. Also I think I didn't do as many mechanical drop sets because my biceps were absolutely done at that point and I didn't see a benefit from extending the set. The contrary can be said about the ring extensions, I think I actually did more mechanical drop sets and as you can see I'm doing like a very easy variation of the ring extensions but I'm still struggling like an idiot. As you can see I started doing assistant concentrics right off the bat and I can barely get complete reps, it is a complete struggle. When I'm doing those reps, those last few reps on the mechanical drop set, I just have to psychologically push myself because the pump is just very crazy, man. Like, you feel that your arm is going to blow up, basically, at any point. It just feels nasty. You can see it in my face right now. This movement has the protein man thumbs up of approval. Either do it or die small. Now, focusing ourselves in the pelican curls, as you can see right now, it is really funny how biomechanic gurus usually try to find the most stable movement that isolates completely the muscle you're trying to target. And they would probably throw shit at the pelican curl due to it being quote unquote unstable and also stretching the chest, making it not 100% a bicep movement. This just shows their dogmatism, because I haven't met a single person that hasn't included pelican curls into their program and didn't see any type of bicep improvements. So before relying on 50 different studies by Schofield and colleagues or whoever you want to cite, actually get on the trenches and start lifting. Now we are at the end of the session. I hope that so far you have liked it. I would like you to leave me some feedback in the comments below. Did you like it? Did you not? And what type of videos would you like to see on the channel as well? Right now you can see the two movements. It's a ring curl as a finisher movement. Nothing too much to say here. It is a very decent movement. I would actually say it's better than any free weighted or cable variation, but it is still inferior to pelican curls. If you want an overloading variation of this movement, you can try it one hand at a time, even though it takes a longer amount of time. On the other hand, we have the bodyweight JM Press. I like to do it with the barbell at the end because my triceps are already fried and I save the ring JM Press variation for the next arm session. I actually rotate between ring extensions and ring JM Press. Right now I do it with the barbell because it is way more stable and I can actually imitate a diamond push-up on the way up. So this allows me to fry the triceps a little bit more. I really recommend you try these movements if you're not strong enough to do ring extensions and pelican curls. You can try these too and slowly build up to the variations. As you can see on the side, I'm dancing because I know the session is getting over and I'm also listening to a fire soundtrack. You can find always the playlist in the link in the description. In this particular session, I was listening to the Schizo Mix Volume 1. As you can see, this movement also has the Protein Man thumbs up of approval. 
we are in the last set and you can see that I can probably get a couple reps of ring curls being very vertical and on the bodyweight J impress it looks more like a diamond push-up. My triceps are completely fried, all of the heads and my biceps are screaming in pain. Also, my brachialis got worked to a high extent because the weight stretch position from the pelican curls actually targets the brachialis as well. So yeah, I'm going to leave you guys with the rest of the set. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, I encourage you to leave me some feedback in the comments below. And thanks for watching.